Hey YouTube, what's going on? This is Nate here, and this is going to be a part two video to my complete iOS 5 overview. So if you haven't already seen the first part, I would encourage you to watch that first, as it goes over some of the more major features in iOS 5, and this one will go over some more of the minor ones. So let's get started by taking a look at messaging. I wanted to make you aware of the color change that will occur when you're messaging someone without an iOS device and when you're using the iMessage system. So if you're like my mom and you have a dumb phone, when you text that person, you're gonna see that the send button is green. When you're texting someone with an iOS device uh, through the iMessage system, you're going to notice that it says iMessage right there, and it is a blue send button. Next, we'll take a look at calendar. So you'll be able to switch between the days and calendar now by simply swiping left and right. And you can pull up a week view by going into landscape mode. And you'll be able to add a new event simply by holding down. Next, we'll take a look at photos. So now you can uh, quickly create a new album simply by selecting some photos. So if we just uh, open up the options menu, select some photos, you'll be able to add them to a new album. We'll just call it whatever we want, save, and it will add it to a new album right here. Next, we'll open up camera. So now if you want to zoom in while taking a photo, you can do that by simply pinching to zoom. Next, I wanted to make you aware that the music and video apps on the iPhone have now been separated. They used to be combined in iOS 4 and it was called the iPod app. Now they've been separated into two, but they both perform the same function. They've just been separated out. So if you open up video here, it looks exactly the same way as it does on the iPod Touch. Uh, next, with YouTube, there aren't really any changes to the app itself, but now you will be able to stream HD video over 3G. Next, we'll open up Maps. Uh, in Maps, you can now get multiple routes. Uh, if you're trying to find directions to a place, you can select it. Uh, it will give you multiple routes. So I just pulled up uh, something right uh, real quick here. You'll notice that it has given me three route options. You can select either of these routes, and it will give you the directions. Additionally, you can now print uh, your maps right from your iOS device over AirPrint. Next, we'll take a look at weather. So Apple will now allow you to view an hour by hour forecast for the day. So if you just select the day, it will bring up this hour by hour forecast for you. Uh, next, we'll take a look at clock. So with the timer now, uh, when you start one, you have the ability to pause it. You don't have to stop it like you did in iOS 4. And next, we'll take a look at Game Center. So in Game Center, you can now add a picture of yourself right here. You can. Uh, get friend recommendations and for games uh, there's now game recommendations up here at the top as well and Apple has pretty much integrated the App Store into Game Center so you can now download games right from here so if I just select this one I could download it right in uh, right in Game Center itself so next up is the App Store so we'll open that up and I wanted to make you aware of a change with iCloud. So iCloud keeps track of your entire purchase history for both iTunes, uh, the App Store, and iBooks. So if you don't, if you haven't remembered if you purchased an app in the past, but you don't have it installed on your device, you'll now be able to tell that uh, by when it says installed. So that means you've already purchased it, and you can go ahead then and install it. So you don't have to worry about getting charged again for an app that you had already purchased. Next, we'll take a look at mail. So in mail now, you can mark your messages. So if we head into edit, we can select these messages right here. And if we wanted to, we could mark them as unread. And you can also mark them as read again then if you want to. Uh, also, there's some rich text formatting that you can do now when you're composing a message. So if I type in the word Apple, select it, you can now bold, italicize, oops, sorry about that. Now bold, italicize, and underline the word. You also have some indentation control. So you can change that. So if you want to increase it or decrease it, you can. Next, I want to show you, um, you can now have the ability to add a new mailbox. So if you select edit up there, choose new mailbox, you can name it whatever you want. Done. And been created for you right there. Next I wanted to take a look at the music app. 
So now with the songs, if you can select any of them, so if I just select this one right here, if you hold down, it will give you a description of the song. Additionally, there's an, um, an icon right here to take you right to the store, so you can buy stuff from iTunes. Heading back in here, there's the ability to group by the album artist now as well, so it looks pretty nice. Next, I wanted to show you the second page. So the Stocks app and the Utilities folder have now been moved over here. Next, we'll go into Settings. So the first thing that you're going to notice here is that with the toggles, they now have a rounded edge. Uh, as with iOS 4, um, they were rectangular. Next, we'll take a look at Location Services. So in here, you can uh, turn on or turn off Location Services for these different apps. And if you open up System Services, then you can have more control over how Location Services will work on your device. Next, we'll head into Sounds. So in Sounds now, you have the ability to have a Reminder Alert, a Calendar Alert, um, a Twitter Alert, and then uh, the same ones that you had before. So if we just select any of these, um, there is now an ability to go to the Buy More Tone section then uh, in iTunes. So that will load up here. So there's that. And then there's also this new uh, tone called Tweet, probably because of the Twitter integration. So that's what that sounds like. Next we're going to take a look at general and about. So in here you'll be able to change your uh, change the name of your device. So you'll be able to do that right here without having to use iTunes. If we scroll down here, you're going to see the diagnostics and usage section. So here you'll be able to enable or disable the feature. And you can also take a look at individual diagnostics and usage data. So there that is. Next, we'll take a look at usage. So in usage now, you can see how much space uh, apps are taking up on your device. And if you want to, you can delete the data from those apps. And then you've got your iCloud storage here as well. And then you've got your cellular usage. Next, we'll take a look at the keyboard. So in keyboard now, there's some nice things. Uh, the first is shortcuts. So you can create a shortcut. For example, I created this one, OMW. So if I type that, uh, let's say I'm sending a text message, it will automatically type the word on my way. So let me show you how that works. Go on a message. So if I type in O M O M W, it's gonna change, you'll see it brings it up right there. So it can make typing a lot faster, especially if you use a phrase a lot when you're typing. You can add that to the shortcut. So there it is. And if you want to, you can add different shortcuts. Uh, the, uh, in the keyboards, there's now an emoji keyboard that you can add. So if we head back into messaging, you notice this little globe icon right here. If you select it, it brings up the emoji icons. So you can put in some right here. Uh, there's a lot, so it's nice to see that Apple has integrated that. Next, we'll take a look at the accessibility section. So here it is, and there's this new feature here called Speak Selection. So if you turn it on, you can change the speaking rate. So let me show you how that works. We'll head into Messages, and I'll just select this right here. And if we choose Speak, it will speak it for us. So you see it works. Next, there's a new hearing aid mode here, and there's also the ability to turn on custom vibrations, which I'll have to show you in a little bit. Uh, now there's an ability to get LED flash for alerts, so let me show you how that works. If I head back into messaging, send myself a text message, flip the device over. And there it is, so a little uh, LED flash alert. back into settings. Uh, now there's the ability to turn on uh, mono audio. You can balance the left and right audio as well. Next up is assistive touch. So what assistive touch will do is it will put a little square icon right here in the uh, lower right hand corner and you can move that around anywhere you want. But basically what it does when you open it up is it will allow you to access different hardware features uh, through the touch screen. So this will be great for people who either have a disability and have trouble accessing the different buttons uh, on your on your iDevice or if you have broken something such as the volume up button. So if we open up device, we'll be able to turn the volume up and down. Right here you can shake the device, 
mute it, rotate the screen, and lock the screen. There's also the home button, so that'll take us home. And there's uh, gestures that you can use as well, so you can select one of these gestures, and it will perform a five finger gesture for you. Open that up. Uh, let's head back then into settings. And uh, you can also create custom gestures for the assistive touch. So let's just make one, uh, make it a T motion. Choose save, let's just call it test. And now we'll open up the assistive touch. If we head into favorites then, you're gonna see my test gesture that I just made. And you're gonna see when I select the screen, it makes that T icon that I did. So there it is again. And now I'll, let me just go ahead and delete that. And then uh, there's also the ability to turn on the headset or the speaker as the default uh, for incoming calls. And then the triple home click then has the ability for the assistive touch. All right, so now we're gonna head into sound so I can show you the custom vibrations that we had set earlier um, in the accessibility section. So if you head into sounds, scroll down here to the bottom. Uh, there's some standard custom vibrations that you can choose. So there's uh, like, for example, rapid, uh, makes the vibration really fast and heartbeat then would be a bit more steady. You can also create your own vibration so you can just tap the screen and you just stop and you'll see those little circles that is for each time that I tap the screen so this will create a vibration pattern for us. And if you want to you can save that vibration pattern and then give it a name. Next, there's the uh, new iCloud section, so you can manage your iCloud account. I'm not going to really go into detail with this. I'm going to create a separate video just for iCloud. Uh, with the mail contacts and calendars, when you want to add a new account, there is now the ability for the Windows Live Hotmail. Additionally, if we head into Mail, I forgot to mention that uh, with your iCloud account, there's this archive folder right here. And if you scroll down to the bottom, then you will see the option then to set it up with the Reminders app. Next we'll head into phone. So with phone right here, now you can change your phone number if you want. Oh, well you can't really change it, but you can edit what your number would be. So it doesn't really change anything, but you can if you want to. Um, then if we scroll down here with Safari, uh, you've got the ability now to open pages in the background or open links in the background. Yeah, uh, there's the private browsing options. If you want, you can turn that on and it'll keep all your browsing uh, private. Uh, then. There's the ability, if we go into advanced here, you can take a look at your website data, so all the websites that you've visited, and if you want to, you can delete that data. Uh, next, with music, there's going to be the, uh, the iTunes match service, so if you have signed up for that, you'll be able to turn that on in here. And then with photos, of course, we've got the photo stream, uh, which I'll talk about more in my iCloud video. So now let's head back over to the iPad. So now I'm going to show you some of the more minor features on the iPad. So the first is with calendar. There's now this new year uh, view that you can see here. So you can take a look at all the months in 2011. So that looks pretty nice. Uh, next we can go into Safari. And uh, what you can do now is for each individual tab, if you hold down on the back button, you can view your browsing history just for that tab. So I was on Google before, so if I select that, it'll take me back to Google. Next, Apple has redesigned the music app for the iPad. So you're gonna see uh, this new layout here. I think this looks amazing. So you've got your playlists, your songs, artists, albums, and more. Uh, there's also this icon here that will take you then to the iTunes Music Store. Heading back into the music app then, uh, you'll see here that you've got the uh, play controls up here, and then you've got your volume controls. Uh, if we select the song then, it'll bring us uh, the cover of the album right there and it'll bring us into this area here and you've got the airplay option then right there as well. Additionally Apple is allowing you to airplay uh, the, your entire iPad screen wirelessly so once you've got your Apple TV set up you can select that icon there and it will bring you uh, your iPad screen onto your Apple TV uh, wirelessly. So those are the changes in the iPad and the iPhone, some of the more minor ones. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Of course, there's gonna be some that I missed. There was just so many uh, features to cover. So if you know of any, please leave a comment below and I'll gladly add them to the description of this video. Please like it, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.